Why build another chatbot when you can build something that talks like a human? In this video, I'll show you how to use React and Akul's avatar API to create a talking assistant right inside your app. Perfect for onboarding, frequently asked questions, or just impressing clients. But first, what is Akul? Akul is an AI platform that lets you generate and stream realistic talking avatars, like actual human-looking characters that speak, gesture, and blink, using nothing but your own script or data. They have APIs for image generation, video dubbing, and translation. But the one we're using today is the Streaming Avatar API. It lets you embed a live avatar into your website or app. You write via chat, speak with your microphone, or even link it to a knowledge base, and the avatar responds in real time, basically turning your web UI into something that feels alive. Imagine this. You're building a website for a small e-commerce brand. They get customer questions all the time. Things like, what's your return policy? Is this size true to fit? Or where's my order? You could build a plain old chatbot, or you could drop in a realistic avatar that talks to the user in a calm, friendly voice. One that smiles, makes eye contact, and can guide them through basic questions, like an actual virtual assistant. So to start, let's head over to akool.com and create an account. Inside, you'll find some awesome tools like face swap, image to video, voice cloning, and of course, streaming avatar. And the cool part? Each of these tools comes with its own API that we can use. Before we can do anything, Akul will first ask us to create our API credentials. This keeps your account secure. So go ahead, generate your key, and then head over to the API documentation section. Right here, you'll see all the AI tools listed in their own API sections. We'll explore more of those later, but for now, let's focus on the Streaming Avatar SDK Quick Start. What makes Akul's Streaming Avatar special is that you don't need a complicated setup to get started. All right, let's open up VS Code and get our project started. We'll use Vite to create our React app and install Tailwind at the same time. In your terminal, type npm create Vite at latest.forward slash, or you can replace it with your project name and hit enter. Then let's select React and JavaScript from the list. Then let's install Tailwind CSS. npm install Tailwind CSS at Tailwind CSS forward slash Vite. After that, make sure to add the Tailwind plugin in your vite.config.ts file and include the Tailwind directives in your app.css or whatever file you're using for styling your app. And to check if everything's working, run your development server, npm run dev. And tada, your project is now up and running, ready to connect with Akul's API. Let's go ahead and create a new JSX file. We'll call it streaming avatar. Inside that file, we're gonna make a simple React component. Just create a function called streaming avatar. And in the return, Let's throw in a heading two tag that says a cool streaming avatar demo, just to get something on the screen for now. Now in our app, let's remove the boilerplate code and replace it with our streaming avatar. All right, we've got something showing up. Nothing fancy yet, just a heading so we know our component's alive. Now let's go back to our streaming avatar component. Next step, we bring in the avatar. To make that happen, we need to set up a few things first. First, we need to define a constant that will hold the ID of the avatar container. This ID is what the Akul script uses to know where to render the avatar on the page. In our case, we'll just call it container ID. Then there's a token from Akul, which basically tells the API who you are and gives you access to their service. We'll get that token later. Then we need to pick which avatar we want to use. Right now, the system gives us one option, which is Tristan. If you want to create your own custom avatar, I'll also show you the endpoint for that later. And finally, there's a small script hosted by Akul that powers the whole thing. We'll load that into our app too. Next, we're going to add some state variables using useState. First, we have loading, which will be true while the avatar is starting up, and false when it's ready. We'll use this to show a loading message or spinner if we want. Then there's error, which we'll use in case something goes wrong, like if the script fails to load or the token is invalid. We can show that message to the user so they know what's up. Lastly, we have session started, which tells us whether the avatar session has officially started. We'll toggle this once everything is loaded and running. These help us track what's going on inside the component and make it easier to show the right UI at the right time. Now that our state is ready, the next step is to load the Akul SDK, the script that actually powers the avatar. We do that using a use effect. Inside the effect, we use an if statement to check whether the script is already in the document. We do this by looking for an element with the ID we defined earlier, which is Akul SDK script ID. If that element doesn't exist, it means the script hasn't been loaded yet. So we create a new script tag. We give it the right ID, set its source to the SDK URL, and mark it as async so it loads in the background. When the script finishes loading successfully, it logs a little a cool SDK loaded message in the console. But if something goes wrong, the own error callback kicks in, logs an error, and updates the error state to let the user know they should refresh the page. 
This only runs once when the component mounts, thanks to the empty dependency array. So we're loading the SDK once, only if we need to, and handling any issues if they pop up. Now that the SDK script is ready, the next step is to actually start the avatar session. This is what tells a cool. Hey, I want to show this avatar now. To do that, we'll write an asynchronous function called handle create session. Right at the top of the function, we set loading to true so we can maybe show a spinner and clear out any previous error. Next, we make a request to Aquil's API to create a new session. This is done with a post request to their live avatar endpoint. We pass in our token in the headers and the avatar ID in the body. If everything goes well, a cool responds with a success code of 1000. So we check it with an if else statement also. Before we start the avatar, we give it a short delay, just one second. So the SDK has time to fully load. This is optional, but helps avoid timing issues. Then we check if window.streamingAvatar is available, which means the SDK loaded correctly. If it's there, we create a new avatar instance and attach it to our container. If for some reason the SDK isn't available, we show an error instead. And if the session itself failed, for example, if your token is invalid or the server returned an error, we show that message too. Finally, we wrap the whole thing in a try catch just in case something unexpected breaks and we reset loading to false once we're done. And last, after creating our session, we will now render it on our return statement. We wrap everything in a main div that takes up the full screen and centers the content both vertically and horizontally. The background is a soft light gray, just to keep the UI feeling clean and calm. Inside it, we start off with a simple heading that says, a cool streaming avatar demo, which is what we did earlier. Below that, we conditionally render a few pieces of UI depending on what's happening. First, if there's an error, like if the SDK fails to load or something goes wrong during the session. We show a red warning box with the error message inside. That way, users, or we during testing, instantly know something didn't go right. Then if the session is in the middle of starting or the SDK is still working, we show a simple loading message. Nothing fancy, just something so we're not staring at a blank screen. Next is the main button. This is what kicks things off. If you click it, we try to create a new session with the Akul API and initialize the avatar. The button says start avatar session when everything's normal. But once clicked, it changes to creating session and becomes grayed out so you don't accidentally double click. The color transitions are smooth too, thanks to Tailwind's utility classes. Blue when active, gray when disabled. Then comes the avatar container itself. This is just a gray box bordered with a light stroke where the avatar will appear once we start a session. If no session is running, we show a little message prompting the user to click the button above. And if the session is starting but not yet ready, we update the message to say it's initializing, just so everything feels responsive. That's it. With this return block, we've completed the visual layer of our app. Now, after all that code, let's go ahead and retrieve our token from a cool. You could do this using Postman or a similar too. Let's open Postman and change the method to post. We will tap into a cool's endpoint to get the token. In the body set to raw JSON, we'll place our client ID and client secret API from earlier. Then click send and it will return the token. Next, let's create our .env file. This will store our Vite Akul API key securely. Once that's done, go back to your streaming avatar component and replace the hard-coded Akul token with process.env.vite Akul API key. Now we're ready to start the development server. Just run npm run dev. Once the app launches, click start session and then click start session again for Akul. You should now see our avatar, Tristan. Type something like, hi there, and Tristan will respond in real time with both voice and visuals. You can also turn on your microphone and it will transcribe your speech in real time. Now, if you ask, what is your current knowledge base? The avatar will respond with October, 2023, which we don't want. To fix that, head over to a cool streaming avatar dashboard. You can upload your own knowledge base there. Easy as that. The possibilities with streaming avatars are endless. But if you just want a pre-recorded video of the avatar talking instead of a live interaction, a cool also has a talking avatar feature with an API for that too. You can also explore more of their awesome features like face swap or even voice clone. If you want to try a cool, head over to acool.com or check out their docs at docsacool.com. Let's see if you'll build the next million dollar SaaS app using this API. And of course, we've uploaded the project we made here to our GitHub, so be sure to check that out. If you want more project-based videos like this, where we explore React concepts in real-world scenarios, drop a comment below and suggest your ideas. Well, that's it for now, Novas. Thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.